Good afternoon, everybody, and welcome to Afternoon Market Action. My name is Glenn. My name is Ryan. And we're going to be your host for the next 72 hours. It's going to be a marathon. We're just going to talk until, and we can't sleep and we can't pee. I love a good marathon. Let's do it, Glenn. That's 26.2 miles. Exactly. <laughs> do you know how the marathon came about? Do you know anything about it? Uh, actually, I don't, Glenn. All right. Please, so please enlighten us. There's a town called Marathon somewhere. And a guy ran 26.2 miles uh, to let somebody know that someone got shot. And then he died because he ran the 26.2 miles. And that, that's how a marathon came about. I thought that was going to be a much better story. Glenn. Well, it was the story that I had to give. That's that's a true story. That's not a Glennism story. That's a true story. So, all right. Waiting for the alert to hit. But I Can get, someone fact check him while we're, no, we're you don't need to fact, You don't need to fact here. check it. Um, so don't worry about it. It's, it's Glenn said it, so that means it's real. It's not fake news. <laughs> we all know that the big news today, waiting for the alert to hit. You're wrong. Uh, I'm not wrong. It came from uh, the Greek. Yeah, I thought it was uh, a great thing. Anyway, and we got nothing. This, we, this is, you know, everybody, there's no way, there's nothing to see here. Everybody <laughs> just, just goes on. There's nothing to see here. It's from ancient Greece, says Kirk. Kirk, you're wrong too. That um, might be the town you're talking about, Glenn. Uh, let's say again. I, th I think that might be the town you're talking about. No, is it Greece? Is it Greece? It's in Greece. It, it could be in Greece. All right. But I think there was a place called Marathon. All right. So there it is. The name Marathon Greece. comes from the legend. I'm not saying that word. Uh, the account, the run from Marathon to Athens first appeared in, I'm not saying that word either. There's a debate about Marathon Greece Olympics. So there we go. All right. So I was right. Y'all are all just giving excerpts <laughs> about how right I was. That's all Glenn, it was. I, I don't know why we try to argue with you. Yes, I agree. All right. I'm so <laughs> the alert is hit. We got 187 people. First off, let's see what we can do to double it because big news today CPI inflation. is hot, huh? It, it, inflation inflation is, is, high, is still ticking higher. It's not where the Fed needs it to be. I think that everybody who thinks that the next Fed cut, uh, Fed meeting is going to be a cut, is not going to happen. So now I'm going to ask the question, like I always ask, how many of you still think that we get three rate cuts this year? Type of one. If you think that we get um, um, two rate cuts this year, type of two, how many of you think that we get no rate cuts this year, type of three? All right. So I look at it this way. Uh, I look at it this way. Um, all of this moving up in the market still stems from the information that the Fed says that we're going to get three rate cuts. And I think that that was, wow, a lot of people, you guys really think that we get three. Really? There's no way. No way. I, 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 I Wow. Now, either you are just super optimistic or you're being Pollyannas. That's what it comes down to. All right? We get 10 just plain. I think none, says Gerald. I, I, for everybody out there who's still putting in three, I, I can't see it. And I don't know what you see to see it. I, I don't see what you see to see it. Um, I'm even hearing a lot of the talking heads going down the path of possibly getting no rate cuts this year. Uncle I'm on the Glenn, boat of higher for longer. I, I again, that's that's the terminology the Fed has used. We're going to be higher for for uh, higher for longer. All right, so I just wanted to see. Good, you guys got a lot more people in the room by doing that. Um, I, 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 you know, I, the people in the room who are putting in three. I don't know what you said. You said put three for no rate cuts. Oh, is that what I said? Is that is that what I said? I don't know. All right. So if, if that's the case, all right, fine. Whew, I, I screwed up the whole thing myself. Sorry. I, I did. I screwed up. This is I, why Joey's in charge. No, Joey's not in charge. Joey had nothing to do with any of this. All right. So with that, we all well, know we that it is it before, big news. Glenn, before this inflation data, you know, I think we're both on the same boat. If we get any rate hikes this year, they will be somewhat politically driven. Okay. So everybody's coming back and saying, that's what you said. That's what you said. That's what you said. You said three for no rate cuts. Okay. All right. Um, and I, I think that anybody who thinks that we are going to still get three rate cuts, I don't, I don't see it. Joey doesn't rule. I, yes. Yes. You're right. I'm not letting my buttons get pushed anymore. Joey, high five. Let them see your hand. Please. <laughs> All right. You, put your hand up. There it is. There's Joey. High five. All right. 
right. Uh, type Daisy four if Glenn says, is <laughs> type four if Glenn messed up the survey. <laughs> well, that would that that would be me. We're All about right. to get a bunch of fours coming in. Yeah, we're probably in a row. we're gonna get a lot of fours coming. <laughs> Surveys in. in a row. We're gonna get to Brian. Um, we're gonna get to Joey's picks. All right. Uh, Joey, put me on this screen. Let's go see how the market is reacting to today's news. Uh, today's candle, big down day. I'm looking at a little reprieve at the bottom. All right. Is the market saying enough is enough and we're going to reprieve? I don't know. Right now, the DEW is flashing down. The primary wave is flashing down. The confirmed call is not there yet. Uh, let me see. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, we could actually get a, uh, a confirmed. The confirmed call is flashing down there right now. There we go. So it looks like all of our major, it looks like all, no, we're not going to put market uh, Joey in, 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 in front of the camera. The only time the, you ever get to see Joey's at a Tampa two day. Joey has a better <laughs> chance of cutting his beard than the Fed cutting rates. Wow. That's a big saying. Joey's got a lot of beard. I'm trying to grow a <laughs> beard like Joey. I got a little Joey baby beard. All right. But yeah, Glenn, we got the confirmed down flashing on the homepage and the DEW uh, down do, does meet its requirements. So if the market stays where it is right now, we're we going to get a, big... a confirmed down, a DEW, and primary wave all down. Not looking good. Yeah. All right. Can you show the DEW? I'll do that real quick. Uh, we'll put on the DEW. And there it is. We are below the 30-day weighted moving average, mm -hmm. and the DPO is below zero. So there it is. So a lot of our market timing, uh, there you go, Tom. A lot of our market timing is right on point. And if you want to learn more about how to trade in this current market with our market by way of market timing, look at um, Ryan's video tonight. Yes. Uh, it's all about how to, especially for you, Amir, you need to watch it like 150 times. It's for you specifically, <laughs> how to use our market timing so that you are prepared before this happens. All right, switch them parallels to reverse. Um, what is the key? Switch them parallel to reverse rotation. Uh, I'm not sure what you're saying. I And I apologize, King Gracie. If inflation is up, we getting an interest rate higher. You know, who No one's said, talking about that. Who, who said that out of... Out of everybody on YouTube, who do you know who said that we get a, we could get a possible rate increase this year? Type it in the room. Has anybody said that on YouTube that you heard that we could possibly get a rate increase this year? If you have, put it in the room. That's all I'm saying. Glenn, are you buying SQQ2? Yep. I, I have that as one of my picks. I do have that as one of my picks. Uh, SQQQ because of what's going on in the market. All right. So that is what the market looks like, how the market has responded. Nobody put that Glenn said that we could get a, a possible rate increase this year. Nobody. Ain't y'all been listening? I said it was a high, that it was a low probability, but a possibility because if he does raise interest rates, it's going to hurt middle America a lot more than what middle America is going through right now. So I said it was highly improbable, but if inflation is rising, if inflation is rising at some point in time, he's going to have to go back to possibly raising a quarter percent. If he does that though, again, middle Mr. Ed didn't say it. Uh, middle America is going to really, the middle class is going to really get screwed over that. All right, let's talk about, um, Especially with inflation edging closer to four percent, that's I, I don't see how we can have rate cuts on the table with inflation at almost four percent. And a lot of people know that when the Fed cuts the rates, that means the poop doesn't hit the fan at that point. You know, so bless you, Joey. Um, and Ramor says if inflation starts to head up, they will have to hike. Uh, put us. Can you put us on? Can I use this? I can't use that. Well, dang it. Let me do what I'm going to do. I hate you sometimes. Is this the right one? Joey, do you care? I, <laughs> all right. So the big news, Fed, look at this. Fed wants mm -hmm. more confidence that inflation is moving towards 2%. That's what the meeting minutes indicate. Well, and we're, it, we're it moving away it. from it. <laughs> it, it. It ain't doing that. All right. It ain't doing that. All right. So big story, consumer prices rose 3.5 from a year ago in March, more than expected. 
Hot inflation reports derails the case for Fed's June rate cut. A lot of people is, yeah, the first one's going to happen in June. I think because it's an election year, this is my thinking. I want to hear your thinking as well. I think that we cut, if we do, we do, but inflation's got to play, you know, it's got to be moving in the right direction. If we cut, we cut in October before the election. And that if we get a cut, it happens then. What about you? What do you think, Ryan? I like that if we get any cuts at this point, I'm on the same boat as you. It's going to be closer to the election, and it's probably going to be uh, more politically driven. Yeah, which but I, with but with inflation at three point five percent, and we just took out uh, January's high of three point four percent. So technically, inflation is trending higher mm-hmm. now with the new high. Um, by definition, I don't I don't see why we would even have rate cuts on the table right now. Interesting. Charles says November after the election. If he uh, does that, that would be all politically driven. You know, even after the election? I think even after the election, I don't care who wins. I think that it's still a point for whoever's coming in or staying in, it's a way to try to get the market still running. But it's going to the economy is going to it's going to be poopy for the economy. All right. Next story. This is Ryan's story. We only had a couple of stories each because we want to concentrate on Joey's picks. Right. Yes. Got to have Joey's picks in there, or right? Whatever. <laughs> Go ahead. Well, if you've noticed, a lot of my shorts, uh, a lot of my 6 p.m. videos this year have been on commodities, been touching on you know gold, oil, silver, precious metals. Uh, today, I found this article here. Uh, bullish on copper prices. You know, they're expecting them to climb well into 2024 as City calls the start of the metal's second bull market this century. Now, copper prices in May trading around $4.30 right now. Um, this would be its highest level since June 2022. So three-month copper prices um, are on the demand right now. So Right now, you know, copper uh, really just kind of seen as a, an indicator of the health of the economy because it's a very industrial resource right now. And as you can see with all the inflation data and economic data coming out, the economy is obviously very strong, causing a lot of demand for copper itself. So I see it being very bullish this year, 2024. We're seeing commodities, you know, across the board, uh, you know, rallying essentially over the last uh, few months, a uh, few weeks, depending on the commodity itself. So, but I, you know, I got copper in the list here. I've got a, um, a copper ETF uh, to track the space here in my watch list this week. So we'll see how it goes. All right. Next one. All my stocks this week, are all tech stocks, Intel unveils the Gaudi three AI accelerator. And this is it setting up a race with NVIDIA. So the AI race is hitting up. NVIDIA is the leader in the space, but the Intel is trying to come in, uh, launching this version of its AI chip, potentially aimed at challenging NVIDIA's dominance in the field. These two stocks. Uh, Ryan, you think Intel's got a chance on catching NVIDIA in any way, shape, form, or fashion? Um, I'm going to go with the Boda. They have a chance, Okay, but it's... It's going to take some time. I agree with that. I, I think everybody who's in this space is going to take time to catch up to NVIDIA. NVIDIA has been doing this for quite some time. Um, they're already a leader in the space. Intel is a great company. It's been around a long time. Um, kind of was the leader in the space. <laughs> uh, for, yep, because it's been around a long time. You know, It's going to be interesting. But I got Intel. I don't have NVIDIA. I think we've talked about NVIDIA. Actually, we should just talk about NVIDIA all day today. Joey would like us to do that. We'll just talk about NVIDIA all day. I think NVIDIA is in his list of stock picks. I don't think so. (laughs) It's not. I don't think so. All right. Next story is yours. Oh, yeah. So like I said, you know, I'm kind of more on the commodity section right now, especially with the market so overbought. Um you know, you're, you're seeing the market time engage, uh, the red lights appear. So that's why I'm not really bullish on stocks. I'm not going to tell you to go out there and buy stocks based on the news here. Um, but this story, however, Costco, obviously seen as uh, an inflation play because of the wholesale and um, 
you know, consumers trying to save a buck there. But uh, they started selling gold, little gold bars. Um, and I did an article on this. They started like last fall, if I remember correctly, when I did a short on it. But they're averaging now $200 million every month. That's a lot of dough, bro. That's a lot of gold. <laughs> Like that's not a little bit of the of the um I mean you think about it, two hundred million dollars last five months, that's almost a billion dollars worth of gold. That's how much sold. Joey makes being my producer. He makes about two hundred uh, two hundred million every month. So yeah, as I was scrolling through the article, it was in September. So I, I knew it was last fall because I did a video when they first started this. Costco sell, selling gold bars for two thousand dollars by late january it started peddling one ounce silver coins in a package of 25 for 675 and so, then they ran out <laughs> yeah no I, I do remember that story they ran out for a little bit um but it makes sense because i mean you know gold is, is is seen as you know an inflation hedge um you know volatility uncertain times um, but if I'm going to invest in gold, I'd want to own the physical asset. I agree. I, do you have any gold? Uh, me personally, no. But actually, after reading this article, I might go to Costco and I, buy I got, a little I, bit. I got some gold. I, I'm holding some gold. Um, I might buy silver, but I wonder how. I wonder how much it is. You know, compared to like the spot price. Like, what's the markup on it? Um, but do your research. But uh, clearly, you know, Costco's got gold there. So, you know, knowing Costco, I imagine it's a pretty good price. There it they is. Got... 2% above the spot prices. Oh, okay. So then I guess does the price fluctuate each day? Well, yeah, because it's a commodity. So it's it's like buying crypto. You know, yeah. you buy crypto is crap, though. So whatever uh, the spot price I, is We that should day. stop calling crypto crypto. We should be calling it crap, though. <laughs> That's what we should be calling it. But it changes. It's a commodity that changes on a day over day basis. So pretty much at Costco, you can pay a two percent fee right. to purchase physical gold or physical silver. Yes. I think that's pretty smart. You know, especially think about the, you know, and I know you talk about the story all the time about the bank runs, yep. the regional banks. Um it's you know, I know that's one of that's one of your uh bubble stories. Uh and I think a lot of people still have that fear, you know. You know, especially if you're in New York, you know, you've got the New York bank, um, you know, under a lot of pressure right now. So I'm, I'm at no surprise that people are running to Costco and buying gold, <laughs> $200 million worth each month. Of That's that. a, they're selling a lot of gold, bro. They sell a lot of gold. Uh, but maybe uh, when I find a good spot, for it. but yeah, you're actually right, Glenn. I should probably buy, uh, I have some, a, a little bit. I almost like that idea of the silver. Um, the 25 pieces. So we, like we, ha something. we had this conversation yesterday. Silver may be the better play only because mm -hmm. gold is at a point where it's overbought. Silver is not. Um, but that's something you guys can make up uh, a difference or, you know, make your decision. Do on. central banks buy silver? I don't know. To back their dollars? No, it's not on any nothing. It's not on the gold standard. I don't, I don't think it was ever on a silver standard. Uh, silver is well, I'm so talking much about like countries around the world because you know we talk about the BRICS nations and other countries. I just did a short on China where we're trying to do financial uh, um, restrictions, right? On because of the the war with Ukraine and Russia and supporting that. Um, but there's a lot of catalysts that are driving central banks to buy gold right now. That's what's pushing the price of gold up. Um, but I didn't know if that was. The case with silver or central banks buy silver at all. I do not know. But huh. Jazz brings up a good point of something we are already considering. Go get your own gold from the ground. What? Damn. I, what, was you, did you have some gold Amir on the ground? Amir says they buy gold. I saw you silver. move down. I was like, do you, you, you got some gold on the floor? <laughs> I was like, dang, bro. What's, what's up with that? I was picking up some gold. Yeah, I, I, I think. And again, that's something on the horizon. I don't think that that's a bad idea if you can find a, a good prospecting and, and go. Just think about it. If you picked up a couple of ounces of gold, you didn't have to buy. You didn't have to pay nobody for it. You own it and you claim it, right? Yeah. Now we just got to find out where the gold is laying around. Yeah. So we got to go dig it. Yeah. Hey, maybe Reed's we, gold mine. Here we come. Maybe we need to go to gold mine. All right. The last maybe thing, we need to go to a gold mine. Maybe we need to. I bought $34,000 of silver coins. 
They've tripled in value since the end of, yeah. I, you know something? Right now, I think precious metals are on the rise, but I would put my money right now, not to say I would back off from gold, but I would put it into silver. All right. The next three stories are mine. I'm going to go through them real quick so we can get to Joey's stuff. Palantir's path to $100. You guys know that I love me some Palantir. I currently <laughs> own it. I've gotten in. I got gotten out. Blah, blah, blah. So, Are you in it now? Yeah, I'm Glenn? in it right now. You're, you're in it? Okay. And I'm getting my ass kicked again. It is. It, it happens. Uh, a 70% growth in its U.S. commercial business. The company raises 2024 forecast. Um, the Palantir Oracle Partnership, there you go, is expected to drive international commercial and growth. Palantir has just got contract after contract after contract. It's like every article we find, it's a, it's a new partnership. At, <laughs> a new but contract. you know something? And, and it's going to pay That's off a good at thing. some point. I just don't know when. Mm -hmm. I just don't know when. Next story, App Loving. Uh, still a bargain. App Loving stock has delivered 376% rally over the last 12 months. My in this guy's analysis, Dyer in his name, um, and uh, uh, analysis suggests that the stock is still very attractively valued. We'll take a look at App Loving, and my last one is Google reveals near limitless limitless applications of G of general um, generative AI cloud next twenty four. So three tech stocks on my list today. Uh, Ryan's got more gold and um commodities so let's go into the software and go to the viewers tab um man look at this people getting scared today look at the vix every look at that it, it popped I, up quite a bit the ib iwm was down almost three percent earlier today but every major indice is down over one percent today vix jumped up still not at at 20 once it gets there, that's when the fear hits the market. But big fearful day, CPI went and moved up. Fish, AI, uh, AMA, big movers. Remember, when I look at these stocks, I pick them. Not only are they up today, but they're up on percentage volume. Look at this, Qantas Airways. That's a lot of moving Ooh, volume. 1,700%. That's a lot of moving volume. So here's some fish for you. I want you to keep your eyes on. This is nothing that I'm telling anybody to back up the truck. Uh, concentrate on the ones that have RTs above one. All of these are pretty much undervalued. Even though big moves today, they are undervalued, which is kind of hard to find in today's age with the market being the way it is. High RVs, these are more what I call um, aggressive plays because RVs are above one, relative safeties are below one. Four of the five have RTs above one. Take a picture, write them down. I don't care what you want to do. Here's some fish <laughs> for you. But this is where I want you to concentrate, and I think Ryan would agree with Contras. me, mm -hmm. is look at the moves on the Contras. Let's go see what's moving up the most. Look at that. Hibs, $24, optionable, up 9% today. SRTY on the Russell, optionable, up 9%. BNKD, you know how I've been feeling about the banks. This is a great play. It's cheap. It's up 7% today. But the RT is not above one. If I'm going to look at Contras, though, Ryan, would you agree? Concentrate on the contras that have RTs above one. Would you agree with that as a as a stepping right. stone? It, it, just make sure there's more of a sustainable uptrend, but yes. So LABD and the, still the bearish on, on Tesla. Tesla. Look at that. Both of them still have RTs above one. That's where I would start. All right. Current hot industry. I didn't do one today based on the market. Uh, Qantas is looking interesting. Fish pizza. Who the heck typing something about fish pizza? <laughs> Ew. Blech. So I got to say, can, can you put a, a throw up -y face up on here? Blech. Holy smokes. Joey's going to put one up. Fish pizza. Uh, look at the volume. Now, uh, understanding you're right with some of these stocks that are moving up today. I didn't look at the volumes. I just looked at them as big movers, as fish, as aggressive fish. Yeah. Thank you, Joey. As aggressive fish. Um, let's go do our picks first. Uh, I'll do my picks for this week. All right. My picks for this week, app, Google, Palantir, and I'm hedging sure. with SQQQ. I'm hedging with SQQQ. And we'll see how this works out next week. Um, my picks last week. Let's see what they did. 
Uh, You're going to be poopy. Gold. Taiwan Semi. Uh, we uh, Ryan did a video on it. Was it last week? I did a short on it this yes, one, today. I did a short on it. This is a powerhouse stock, folks. Microsoft, you are oil. Palantir. I always got Palantir. Let's go. See. You always, well, always have got Palantir. Palantir. <laughs> Damn it. Every every week something comes out about Palantir. Let's go look at what they look like. Uh, I made a quarter of a percent today. Nice, nothing blew the market. Nothing blew the doors off the market. But there's Taiwan, Semi, Microsoft. What lost money? Palantir, Psy, and Ford. All right. So those were my picks. I made a quarter of a percent. The market was down in excess of 1%. Ryan's picks for this week. TSM beat revenue exp- and you know TSM yes TSM is down is up in a down market and they have earnings on the 18th earnings is on the 18th all right so these are your picks Ryan you want to say anything about them yeah uh commodities taking a hit today we see J nug down three percent copper down a percent gold shares the spider down 0.62 percent the only mover up today is Costco actually I think Costco you know even if you know we're still in the whole soft landing scenario. If that's going to happen, um, but I see it. You know, Costco is a pretty good play, especially you know if we do uh, go into a recession, you know, more of a defense play. But with you know with the gold story here and gold taking a a, a charge right now, um, you know, I think these are good plays altogether. Now, like I said, focus like Glenn said, I should say, focus on the ones with the RT above one right now, which are the commodities. Costco's at 0.92. Now, as far as relative safety here, three of these are ETFs on these different commodities. However, Costco does come in at 1.44. So relatively safe play. Um, you know, if you are going to get into a stock, this isn't a bad one to get into. Uh, but yeah, just commodities. I think they'll be hot. But let's take a look at my picks last week. Hopefully we had some luck there. All right, real quick while that's going on, Dave says, any word on when VV is moving to the web base? Mentioned in January meeting in Florida. I don't have any updates. Um, Dave is here. Dave, have you heard any word? I got somebody from our customer service in here. I don't know. I, I haven't heard any new word on it. Oh, I love this. You've got Bitcoin. It's going to suck. All right. So this. <laughs> Glenn just been waiting all week to say that. You got copper. You got silver, Spotify, gold. You might be all right. Oh, nope. You got Ibit and Mara. They're going to kick your butt. All right. Let's see. Let's quick them. Let's quick test them all. Yep. I was up a quarter. He's down. And what two? There they did. Uh, no, Intel. Intel. Interesting. It's on my list. But that's why I said last week. When it comes to the, the crypto, especially the ETFs, I'm getting f- further away from the miners and more into the spots. I, and that's the smart way to go. I think with the having miners are going to get their butts kicked until they can catch up. Correct. Yeah. Because um, we're seeing right here, I mean, I bet that was the top winner on the list. Interesting. As much as I hate crypto. But look at the miner down 10%. Yeah. Big difference. So that's why I said, I, I think it was the last week or the week before, um, you know, with the spots now, I, I, I'd much rather go spots. You know, I, and if, if I want to leverage my play, you know, I'm sure there's ETFs out there that leverage it. Um, if not, you know, like me, I, I'll just trade it with options to leverage it. As much as I don't like crypto, I do like that people are getting the opportunity to get into Bitcoin from an ETF perspective. And it shows. It mm-hmm. definitely shows. All right. Now, let's get to Joey's picks. Um, Glenn, where the hell is it? Where did I put it? So were you sad that Bitcoin didn't go down when you hit that quick test? Yeah, pretty, <laughs> were you a little sad? Think about it. Pre- pretty much. Glenn, <laughs> here it is. And Joey's picks. Here we go. Hi, this is it. Waiting for Everybody hey, wanted Joey's picks. These are five solid picks. Actually, or no, you got ten? Yeah, because he gave me five more. So I hooked them uh, up. I gave him, I made sure that the stocks that I picked for him were at least all up today. Joey goes and gives me his other five, and they're all... There's one, two. <laughs> hey, three. I like Amazon. Uh, uh, I didn't. Uh, no. One, two, three. Did you give me that? H I G. These were the other five. The second five. Notice that the five that I gave him. At least I tried to help him out. I tried to help a brother out. 
and make sure that they were at least up today. So here's Joey's picks. What do you think <laughs> about now and AVGO? Amir today? Nothing. Well, Don't buy anything. Uh, I, I would not. I'd be careful with buying any anything just quite yet personally. All right. So, Ryan, we're going to look at these stocks. Let's start off. Let me move this over. Let's start off from the VST perspective. Joey picked all the stocks that have that had good VSTs. That was smart and on his part. All from right? my understanding, just to give a customer's perspective here, Joey focused on VST and CI. Oh, right? I thought he did he do VST and CI or RT and CI? VST times CI. Okay, VST times CI. No, I didn't okay, so these are the CI. stocks in the database with the highest combination of both VST and CI, right? Uh, I think well, they would. He did RT. I did RT times CI. Oh, okay. I I think either one of them are really good. I did the RT because I wanted to make sure that his stocks were trending up, and all of them are. All mm -hmm. of them are trending up. They all have good VSTs. They all have C good CIs. And the reason why I mess with Joey on his picks is. As a subscriber to the VectorVest system, Joey did the right thing that every new subscriber should do. And that's to concentrate on VST, CI, RT. These are the three main indicators for those people who are brand new to the VectorVest system. Notice that every stock that he picked was a buy recommendation as well. All right. So. Anything else you want to talk about these stocks before we go look at their graphs? Uh, I own Amazon. I just it up. I, Joey says he owns Amazon and he's trying to. You don't tell people that you're oh, trying sorry. to pump it up. I thought, I thought we had to tell we were trying to pump it. No, no we're you told me the <laughs> only reason why. Oh my gosh, Joey! It. All right, so I'm, I'm gonna learn you something. The only hey, reason why you this, I got my mom in Amazon too. The so. only reason why you tell people <laughs> that you own it is so that you're being transparent as you're doing the analysis. But I'm gonna pump it. No, you, stop saying that. <laughs> stop saying that. Oh my gosh! Can they hear him? Uh, I think Probably. they. I think they can. Probably. Hear him. But I'm, I'm I, I do own Amazon, but I'm just joking. All right. You don't want to. Yeah, I don't it. own Amazon. I actually got my mom back in Amazon. It was like 112 dollars. Yeah, I don't own Amazon. S still holding it. All right. So I do like. Let's sort these by relative value. What stocks have the best upside? Starts from Dell all the way to Amazon. Um, these are ETFs and ARQ. Is not that good a stock? Fundamentally, not sound. All of his other picks are, um, but these I, I wouldn't. Yeah, that's the only stock with weak fundamentals. Yeah, I don't know why he would have picked it. Oh, you know what it is? The RTs at one point seven eight. Oh, which gives it a higher VST. Yeah, yeah, I wouldn't that's buy the right. stock. But that's a stupid pick by Joey. Okay, it, there's one. All right, <laughs> you get one mistake. Now it's okay. interesting, even though. Fundamentally Watch me pull up on the graph, and it's got a beautiful trade setup. Yeah, there he goes. Look at that CI. <laughs> that CI says it goes up more than it goes down. All right. So now, is there anything else you want to talk about before we look at their graphs? Let's just look at the uh, the growth rate and earnings. Let's look at some of that forecasted data. There we go. Yeah, we got the growth rate and earnings and the sales growth rate there. Look at that. It's another bad thing about ARQ. But it's got. But it's for got, the most part, I mean, look at that a lot of these rate. numbers are double digits and look great. Yeah. You got a little weakness Those when it comes to Dell Tech. Oh, Joey says the other five that he gave me have dividends. How many of them have dividends? Dividends. They don't all have dividends, Joey. There's VRT seven. up. Seven out of ten. Seven out. Seven. Let's, let's stop talking now. This is me and Ryan's time. <laughs> all right. I thought you were asking. Me. And the, I'm not asking you anymore. Dividend safeties are really good on these. So not only are these picks really good picks with the exception of ARQ, but they pay dividends. The dividend safeties are good. The dividend yields are okay mm -hmm. in today's market. And um, the yield safety growths are all above one with the exception of the NVIDIA one. All right. Uh, Ramar says the growth rate is why he's holding Amazon. Um, Ravi says on this one, I'm with Joey. He's being transparent. Yeah, I, I think everybody really knew that, Ravi. I was just trying to, I'm trying to help him. I'm trying to mentor him and how he says things, but he doesn't listen. Well, we can't say we're trying to pump up. Stuff. No, you, stop it. You're not supposed <laughs> to stop it. Oh my gosh. Say that I'm pumping it anymore. Oh my gosh. You, yeah, both you can't say pumping. Joey. Stop it. 
Yeah. 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 Shut up. All right, let's go graph these. But we do appreciate your transparency, Joe. Exactly. I'm going to put this on a three-month graph. You know I like to use. You want to change the graph layout, Ryan? Yes or no? No, NPI. Let's keep it. Okay. Pulte Holmes is in his list. Love the move. You know. Beautiful lower left, upper right. Absolutely. But the trigger has been kind of volatile in and out, in and out, in and out. Yeah. Oh, Joey, how do I add on the, the JPI? Well, it's not for everybody, and you probably don't have it installed. <laughs> oh, uh, you got to have that premium yeah, subscription. <laughs> shut up. No, that, no, shut no. up. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Shut up. I don't think Glenn has access to that. I don't. Uh, I don't the, how do I not have JPI access to yet. it? Yet. Oh, my gosh. Oh, my gosh. All right. <laughs> Another thing about Joey's picks. Understand what's going on in the market right now. So even though these are good-looking stocks. Yes, very important. DEW might close down. Primary wave is going to close down. And the confirmed call may clo close down. Even if I'm looking at this list of stocks, I'm going to make sure that I'm hitting or right at a three-month high, but I'm going to put tight stops on it. Do you agree with that, uh, Ryan? Definitely do. Okay. Definitely do. You know, any stock that we mentioned today, in my opinion, I'm not buying any stocks today. I'm not going to advocate buying any stocks today with the market down like it is right now. The Dow Jones over 500 points. No, confirm down, DEW down right now. No. All right. But these are all good stocks to put in a watch list. You know, if the market finds a bottom, starts to trend back up, go back to this list, you know? I'm quick to answer this answer this question quick. Are you guys interested in seeing and I would go forward into the the, the next week's only five stocks. Would you guys be interested in seeing Joey's picks every week? Type of one. Would you be interested in watching Joey Stocks pick every week? Type of one. All right. And I'll set up just like we do me and Ryan Stocks. I will do a watch list for Joey Stock picks last week and his picks for this week. Do Say again. Do for no. Oh, do a two for no. One for yes, two for no. And one for Everyone's yes. doing yes. Everybody's Joey's all right, so I'll start setting that up. I'll start setting that up. Do the SP. The VST times CI next week. All right. Oh, we Caterpillar, same scenario. Look at, love the move. I love the move, but look at what's going on. But this is, I think, definitely a part it's of It's just that pullback. It's just that no. pullback going on. All right. His fish are safer. Shut up, Jazz. I'm just, I'm going to just get mad at everybody. I, I'm just going <laughs> to effing get mad at everybody. That's how this is going to happen. Glenn, they don't even want you on the camera anymore. I know. Can they just, Joey, they just can we get look Joey at, in the box? Joey's pumps. Mark says, <laughs> create a folder called Joey's pumps. Wow. Bill says no. There you go. Thank you, Bill. <laughs> Joey's you pumps. All right. Next one. JPM. Love the play. We just lost trigger. Again, a lot of this is indicative of what's going on in the market right now. Oh, the big banks are reporting Friday. Are they starting Friday? They're starting Friday. I think it's only yep. three. I think it's only three. Uh, well, BlackRock's in there. Hold on. Let me check. City. Real, let me check real quick. I think there's only three. Well, I did on my um, Market Insights no, video no, Monday. No, I, nobody's, nobody's talking to you right now. So, all right. So, <laughs> let's go to tools. Where the heck is this? Tools, economic calendar. I don't want that. I want tools, earnings calendar. JP Morgan, Wells Fargo, BlackRock, Citigroup. That's on that's Friday? It. Friday. Yep, that's Friday. JP, yeah, Wells, BlackRock, Citigroup. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, probably seven, eight. Looks like there's eight stocks reporting on Friday, eight bank stocks. Uh, a mere I fifth. mean, it's crazy that. If you think about it, we're about to go back into earnings. So we're about to repeat the whole hype cycle from this AI earnings yeah. and all the stuff that we just did the first quarter of this yeah. month. Well, we do, we're going to do it every quarter, right? Yeah. We do it every quarter. <laughs> JPM pulling back. Wow. Hig. I don't know what happened yesterday. It's got a little rebound today. Love no the trigger. equity curve. Joey gives better VV merch away than Glenn. 
So this is a position, like, if I was here. holding this position, yeah. I'd be protecting profit. Absolutely. I'd be taking stuff off the table. Absolutely. You, close, you broke the, the uptrend, clearly. Big down day tomorrow. You've lost a trigger there. Um, so this is a – that's what I'm saying. This is the type of – this is the time to start really going through your portfolio, looking at the stock charts and saying, hey, where do I want to start taking profit? And if you want to know that, watch the 6 p.m. video tonight. Definitely, you want to get that information, especially if you're holding stocks like Amir, like SMCI. This is tomorrow, uh, tonight's video is going to help you, Amir. All right, next one. Mm. This doesn't it look looks as pretty good. as the other ones. Big it's gap. got that gap there. And it faded it, created a level of support. Beautiful level of support sitting at 104.50. Mm. Yeah. Me, um, that was is that one that you gave me? Okay. Oh my gosh, well, you're just flapping your jibs. I'm trying to get through this. <laughs> oh my gosh. Good news, folks. Xroff stock is on sale today. Says Mark. I'm not ever talking about Xroff on YouTube ever again. Just not doing it. But I do own it. Sigh. It'll be cheaper. You still own it? It'll be. Joey says Xroff will be cheaper tomorrow. Nice. It'll be cheaper. Tomorrow. That's what Joey Joey just says. Oh, that was say hi to VV Nation. That's Ray. Hello, VV Nation. Yeah. So uh <laughs> Joey said that XROF is gonna be on more sale tomorrow. That's nice. Joey's Joey's the new stock picker. All right, next one. Wow. NVIDIA big. Look at that move. You, you know, NVIDIA SMCI, a lot of these big stocks that made so much money put this on a six-month graph that's made so much money this is healthy this is not abnormal no this is healthy but interesting how it's up though on a down day could be that this is coming in at a nice bottom and nvidia could be back on its way up i'm thinking that a lot of these ai picks may have an opportunity may have an opportunity to be in their own world as the market goes down. I don't know. I don't know. Understand yep. that the market's trend affects 80% of the stocks in the market. Keep that in mind. All right. Next pick, VRT, a little bit of a rebound today as well. Could this be? If Tight they, trading range over the last, uh, well, about two weeks now. Look at that. In a, in a channel, still have trigger, still have trend. Love this bounce. This is probably one of his better picks uh, out of all of the, the silly picks he had. This is probably this <laughs> is probably a bigger body than Wick at the top. But I can't, and I, I don't think either one of us can stress enough, keep in mind what's going on in the market. Mm -hmm. I right, keep, keep that in mind. Buy the dip on NVIDIA. Ooh. Ryan? I... I Personally, I'd I'm, say no because of what's going on in the market. But no. um, this is and the only reason why I say no right now is because the actual NVIDIA chart, because I uh, the video tonight, actually look at NVIDIA, the price action of, of NVIDIA has gone below its 20 day exponential moving average and actually hitting it as a level of resistance right now. 20 day exponential. Yeah. Um. Add moving average exponential 20. Boom. He's right on point. It? Look at that. Broke its 20 day exponential moving average. Now it's utilizing it as a level of resistance. So, yeah. unless we get a solid break above that 20 day exponential moving average, strong volume, you know, a close or two above it, just for confirmation. I'm not a I'm not a dip buyer quite yet. There you Especially go. With the MTI is still so high. You know, if the market's really gonna pull back and a really like healthy retracement. We need that MTI to get back down to the point sixes. I agree with that too. And, and video, so that means we hold or sell. Ryan just answered that question, AB. I don't think I would want to be in it until I can see it work back. Let the stock come to me. Right now, it's not coming to me. It's moving away from me. Um, no trigger. Trend is there, but that twenty-day exponential moving average mm -hmm. did it serve this beautiful? I love that he used it. That Ryan used it. You see it, a nice level of support there, about absolutely. halfway through the chart. Absolutely. Um, so that's where I'm seeing weakness in NVIDIA. Uh, again, it's in the video tonight. Um, I, I cover quite a few different things going on in the market. I don't really give any fish. Um, just trying to give you some pointers of 
what to prepare for, uh, give you a couple tips on different stop criteria. So definitely check out the video tonight. Um, I think you'll the, see what video, I'm talking about. I think the title of the video should have been Amir, watch this. That's what I think. <laughs> I think that the title of the video should have been Amir, watch this. I would really love a good correction to reset the markets. I think we've been needing that for quite some time. I didn't say a crash. And I don't think Ryan and I both think that we need a crash, but a healthy correction is right on point. Why are you going to click no, on that? Yeah, what? I don't. I don't think we're in a, any kind of crash scenario right now. Um, <laughs> you know, even with the hot inflation, I, you know, every, everyone can agree. We just need a nice, healthy retracement, so that way the market can continue to rise going forward. John, John, I just put you in timeout. I just put you in timeout. John says. Uh, the JPI had me out of NVIDIA at the exact top bar. How does Joey do it? He, you ain't got it. Uh, stop it. Uh, John, I just put you in timeout. All right, you're in timeout. Let's go finish looking at the graphs. What is the difference between a simple moving average and the exponential moving average? Good question. All right. So I'm going to explain this real quick. Simple, weighted, exponential. All right. Actually, simple, exponential, weighted. The simple moving average tracks price but gives you gosh dang it um i'm going to do that tomorrow dennis if you're here tomorrow because uh, i gotta set up a graph with all three so but they're weighted differently they are they, they're calculated differently so if it's simple like if i have a 10 day moving average all 10 days are weighted the same and it right? tends to not track price as close correct and then the exponential the data more recent gets exponentially more important. It will track price closer and the weighted will track price even closer. They put more weight on the later data. So exactly. I like using exponential because it's right in the middle for the most part, generalizing it's right in the middle between the simple and the weighted, the exponential tends to track right in the middle of those two close enough to price, but not way too close to price. All right. And I think that that is. But Dennis, if you're here tomorrow, I, I can I can have something set up to answer that question and show it to you on a graph. All right. Um, so I'm not I'm with Ryan. I'm not into buying the dip on NVIDIA right now. Um, We did look at VRT. Wow. Amazon. Look at I that. like Amazon. Shut up, Joey. Joey's sitting there going, uh, uh, like, like you know. I was actually just thinking last week, uh, should I be getting my mom out of this position soon? Because it's almost doubled in price since she, uh, since I got her into it. But looking at this chart here with trend, still in our favor. Trigger, eh, a little iffy on the trigger. But, you know, update a day. It will, well, it gapped lower, but with trading action at sessions highs right now, I don't really see any a reason to sell Amazon at this moment. I, I you know... It's a down day, but a rebound day. Yeah. Because it's an open candle. I think people who are only holding Amazon or investing in Amazon still, we're only one day off the three month high, off the six month high. I but, mean, you can see the trend line on Amazon too. We're right at that trend line, utilizing as a level of support right now. You talk about here or? No, no. Uh, if you connect the bottom low, yep, like that. There you go. It's a great trend line. It's a great trend line, but I'd I be, think you got to I can't believe Akshaya said, Glenn, are you a math major that, I, can't said that I can't believe he said that. <laughs> I, I can't stand that. Yes, I, Akshaya. He's a math major and you are a fortune teller. I am not. Glenn, <laughs> uh, can you please talk about this graph? This happened in July for what stock, Amir? You got to do it quick. You got to do it quick. What stock are you talking about using this graph on? All right. Um, please define trigger. So Richard, looking at RT. Great question. So Stan Heller never actually utilized the terminology of trigger. I do. Um, That's a Glennism. It is a Glennism. I'm looking at the five and the 40 day moving average of RT. Trigger. When the five goes below the 40, that's a good time to get out. When the five goes above the 40, that's a good time to get in. You'll see that time and time again, right? So I call the five crossing above the 40 on RT as a trigger. This is trend. When you're looking at the five and the 40 on the stop price of the stock, 
uh, five and yeah, and the stop, uh, the five and the forty and the stop price of the stock. The blue above red shows trend for those longer term people. For those that are a little bit more aggressive, getting in and out to capture all of the bumps and wiggles on the stock, that's what trigger is. Does that help you, Richard? That's what I call trigger. And again, this is something that Stan Heller in Canada came up with, but he never utilized the words trigger. I used it as a way to tie these two together. All right. Um, JG says, relax, everyone. No real economic threat. But my car crash. No real economic threat. Inflation is still running hotter than what the Fed, what the Fed wants. That's, I would say that's a little bit of an economic threat. Uh, I would agree. I, I, totally, but, I, I totally would agree. Yeah. I didn't say it was a major thing. I said, you know, that it's a, it's a problem. It's in a problem with the economy, and it's going to affect his ability to cut or not to cut. That is but, the question. I mean, look at the market. The market was showing weakness before today's report. Yep. You know, we had the primary wave down since, what, last week? We've had a lot of indecision in the BSR, red, yellow, green. So we, we saw a weakness before this report. We've been talking about it for the longest time. Well, mm -hmm. remember in the beginning of the year, we were talking about the FOMO rally? Yep. And then by last month, we were just saying, this is ridiculous. <laughs> I, I know. This market is crazy. <laughs> Why don't you have DXYZ stock? It's doing amazingly up and down. Uh, I don't know. Because we track over 9,000 stocks, it'd be interesting if we could put all 9,000 stocks into one segment, but we can't. Higher for longer could also be a threat, and but the Fed said that that was the case, yeah. right? All right. Uh, you, I got this. You, you just sit there. I just don't see if inflation stays at 3.5% or higher, it doesn't get any lower. And they call it sticky now. Yeah, sticky. Um, I, I, I just don't see if, if we stay at 3.5 or higher, you know, for the remainder of the year, the next couple of months, I don't see interest rate cuts this year. I don't, I don't, I don't see the logic in that. That's realistic talk. Yeah. Uh, and that's another piece. The problem is the fed told everyone he's cutting the rates three times. Now he's saying he's not cutting. And I think more and more people are seeing that and they're getting out of the market or the market's going to be affected by that. All right. Yeah, um, oh yeah, the market's going to be affected by that. It's been rallying, you know, all these all these oh. tech companies and AI companies are growth stocks. But right now when you see the data coming in that it's moving higher, people are going to be like if you think about it, he's not going to be able to cut. The yeah. rally was over that cut. I think that the rally starts to stall as you see as you talked about today. Um that's going to be a problem for the market. Right? Yeah. All right. Nice. Next one, ARQ. Why would he pick a stock like this? Oh, this is the. Oh, this is the, the garbage stock, stock that he picked. Well, I mean, look at it. It's a clear momentum play. Uh, yeah. A, a speculative momentum play. And a lot of give back right here, but a lot of rebound. I don't like it. A lot of give back today. Look at that big gap up. Um, no, I'm not a not a believer. I'm not a believer either. It's a crap. <laughs> that was a crappy pick, Joey. Joey. NV, NVDX. I'm not a fan of it either. A little bit of a rebound. I mean, a today. clear downtrend. Look at that. Clear. And yeah, and we just started trading it, uh, watching it, We're tracking it. Yeah. I'm sad. I'm going to be on the road during Masters weekend. Yeah, I feel for you, Mark, but I'm not. So <laughs> I'm just I'm watching. I'm watching the Masters. All right, those were Joey's. So this is what I'm going to do. Let's go to the viewers tab. Joey's picks. I'm going to save that. Hold on. Uh, edit. Joey's picks. Last week. Last week. No, last week. Let me do this, Joey. You just sit there. Click on OK. <laughs> Isn't that what he normally does? It just sits there? No. He just he's always running his mouth. <laughs> Sounds like someone else I know. Um I, I gotta move it. I gotta move <laughs> it to our I'll move it. And then uh huh. 
no, it's not going to be your own folder. It's going to be in the AMA where we have Glenn Ryan's. I'll put Joey's. Yeah, don't, Joey, I, you don't get your own you ain't, folder. You ain't here, even but... nothing near big to have your own folder. <laughs> the Jackass. Joey you folder. Got Gosh, dang it. Next week, his picks will be up 4%. We'll see. We'll, be... <laughs> we'll see. All right, we got to go. I, I was going to try to look at some of your stocks today, but I think with us doing five picks from, you know, looking at our picks and Joey's picks, we'll have more time next week to go look at some of your picks. All right, so I'm not going to do it this week, but I think we could do it next week. I may stop in Cornelius on the way back from New Jersey with my clubs. Oh, we want to play golf? Is that what you're saying, Mark? <laughs> let me know. Oh boy. Let me know. I will set up the I will set up a tea time. Don't worry, Mark. Glenn plays with a handicap, so you'll be all right. Uh I, I, don't, I don't like you. Mark Norton, make sure you bring <laughs> Glenn some crispy bacon. Absolutely. You want to play some golf. And actually, if you come, I can get a cut. We can get a foursome. I can get I'm sure that Steve Chapel would want to play. Um, I'll see if Jim Penna wants to play. We can get a foursome. Nonetheless, if I can't get Does Joey them, play, huh? Joey plays. Joey golf? doesn't play golf. Oh. Um, I need. <laughs> I, I will. I will. I will set up a tea time. Even if they can't come, we'll play. Uh, what day would be sad? It would be a Saturday. Would be the best. Saturday morning. Saturday morning would be the best. And if I can get a couple of other Vector Vest people to play, I hope. I. I. Brian. Ryan. Do you play golf? Um, not really, but I can't play with my shoulder right now. Anyways. Oh, okay. I wouldn't mind just, you, you know, coming out. Uh, you got to give me the date. You got to give me the date, Mark. I'll book it now. You give me the date. I will book it now, bro. Oh my gosh. I'm so excited. Uh, you have to do a live feed for the, I'll, I will put some shorts on YouTube with me and Mark <laughs> playing. Think I won't. I think I won't. All right. Uh, you, I don't think you no. will, Glenn. Uh, not today. All right, so you can put us on the last screen. We're going to be April 21st. All right, I'm going to book it. Okay. April 21st. Oh, that's next weekend. Um, What am I doing next weekend? I'm, I'm, I don't care. I'm playing golf with Mark. I don't care. I'm playing, I'm playing, playing golf. golf with Mark. What's my handicap? Like 200. I'll be at the beach next weekend, Mark. So I, I, shoot, I shoot about a 100. About a 50 on the front and 50 on the nine. If I count all my shots the way I'm supposed to. That's right. Who's the who's the best golfer? Um, Steve, it would probably be Steve, Jim Penna, and Chris Adams. Those would probably be the three best players that we have at Vector Vest. Those three people. Glenn's handicap is his golf swing. I'll take that. But I'm going to be able do to. Do we still the do the golf outing in no. uh, December? How long have you been here? Oh my gosh, no, we don't do that anymore. We don't do the summer one, nor do we do the winter one. We don't oh. anymore. Sunscreen, Ryan, sunscreen. Yeah, I need a lot of that. Psh, nope. <laughs> sure not. All right. Yeah, I got burnt watching a baseball game last Sunday. Did you really? I don't, that doesn't happen for me. Mike says, hey, Joey, <laughs> thanks for taking the time and your generosity stealing your picks. Yes, thank you, Joe. Whatever. I put a lot of effort yeah. into that today. You got a BB Nation. Anything for you? Whatever. All right, I'm gonna have to build. I'm gonna build a folder of his stuff. Stop talking. Plenty more with that. Whatever. Plenty more. Stop. Plenty more with that. Just stop. <laughs> Spray on abs, Ryan. There you go. All right, yeah, we're we gonna go. go. We're gonna be out a little early today, but next week we'll be more in sync with all three of our picks, and I'll look at some. We'll look at some of your picks. All right. Um, oh, we're actually out on time today. That's a first. Will you come for my sister's birthday? I make a reservations for all of you to play golf in Palm Desert. Where's Palm Desert? It's in Florida, isn't it? Or is it? You said it with so much confidence, did, and then you I didn't did. know by the end. All right. Um, Palm Desert, Florida. I'll, I'll come. I'll if somebody's paying for me a ticket to come to play golf, I'm play some golf. Believe you me. <laughs> I, I, I will play. How golf will travel? California. It's in California. That's what I, well, I like that even better. All right. Um. But Mark, I'm booking it. April 21st, I'll give you uh, all of the particulars and the time. I'll give you all of the particulars and the time. Oh, we're going we're gonna to play some golf. And we're going to... We're going to play more golf. I'm going to play. We're going to play Mallet Head. Oh, Mallet? We're going to play Mallet Head. It's easier for me to, to book. It's seven days out. I'm not a club member at Mooresville, so... <laughs> well, I, think I, I don't disagree. I think it is the best course for the money. All right. Let us know who wins. Uh, we'll we'll put that out there. 
If, if, hey, Amir, if that's Palm Desert, California, let me know, because that's actually where my godfather lives. I've go. been meaning to go out there and visit him. All right. Well, if, if I would love to go play golf. In it's beautiful out there. All right. Who signed us off last week? I did. Your turn this week, buddy. Uh, right, it's, it's Joey's turn. Joey gave his picks. So Joey can sign us off this no, week. You've already told me to shut up eight times. You were counting? <laughs> you you, were you counting? You talked. All right. No goat <laughs> pastures, Glenn. I know we're not going to no goat. That's messed up. Why would you think that I'm gonna I'm a professional golfer? I'm gonna put us on a really good course. Yeah. All right. You guys. No, made I think me he's referring to that me. day where we did the goat video. That was a messed up video. That was wasn't not, it like Glenn on a rant and then they just put a goat and you over put me? the goats in, in your place while I was yeah. doing the rant. Yeah. <laughs> All right, folks. If you're brand new to the channel, you haven't subscribed yet. Hit the subscribe channel. Uh, Ryan's got a video coming out tonight, especially to help you in these times navigating this market. How to use our market timing to help you and never, ever, ever, ever be blindsided. Uh, tomorrow I have a live stream at two trending Thursday. Um, and then Ryan's got a video coming out tomorrow night as well. And then Friday, I've got the 12 o'clock mobile app training. And then I've mm -hmm. got the Friday 6 p.m. video. So we got a lot of content on here. So if you're not a subscriber, hit the subscribe button. Um, adios, arrivederci, ciao, au revoir, sayonara, aloha to all my peeps in Hawaii. Uh, odabu, bom dia, salam, shalom, namaste, yasu. Until the next time, <laughs> folks, see ya. See ya.